Hey, Jamie. Hey, Lindsay. How can you hear are you? me? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, let's see. Let me ask. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm like, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> How have you been? I've been pretty good. Pretty good. How about you? Good. Just trying to stay as self quarantine as I can. <laughs> um, yes. You know, having kids is is they they want to do stuff. You know, my son is like, can I go see my friend? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you can't go to this house right now. Like, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> he's he's but. He's content because he's like, oh, I can stay home and play video games. So he's like, oh, as long as I can play video games, then I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you still, you're in Savannah still? Yeah, Savannah I'm in Savannah. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, big city. <laughs> what, what part of um, South Carolina are you in now? I'm in Georgia. or well, Northeast Georgia. So, like, yeah, like 45 minutes. For me? Uh, at this been a minute. No, uh, no, no, no. From, mm. I'm at the top. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm like four mm. hours from you. Oh, man. Girl, I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Georgia. I was trying to wait a little bit for people to, you know, to kind of hop on. Yeah. But I know Instagram is timed. And so, like, they give you, what, what is it, like 50 minutes? And so I'm like, I don't want to lose any time, but I'm like, Give it a few minutes and see if people kind of jump on. Okay. Yeah, it, it's been a yeah, it's been interesting trying to for sure. <laughs> yeah, girl, trying to balance all this. So, so how has everything I guess been for you as far as um, like I guess work and stuff like you know being able to you know have group sessions or you know like yeah, well, uh, so I work. I have a job, so I've been working from home, and okay. I've been doing it somebody hey uniquely um <laughs> and then the business i had to pivot because so you know i have affirmation cards um but yeah. the company i use <laughs> they shut down for a bus and so i know <laughs> so i wasn't able to order until may and i still don't have cards so i've had to like promote other stuff make some digital products um what else have I done? Doing some online stuff too, like more videos and classes mm -hmm. online. So that's that's been a challenge. <laughs> Trying to yeah. put it. I've been so concerned about people with like small businesses. I'm like, yeah, um, <laughs> how they stay afloat? Like that's their income. So, yeah, so it's so like, yeah, we got like two or three people that's joined. So I'm gonna go mm -hmm. ahead and get started. I don't want us to lose any time. All right, so. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lindsay. I am the founder and creator of Consciously Coping. Um, and so tonight I'm really excited um, because I have someone on here who, I mean, literally was the first person I was introduced to for yoga. Um, and so with her being the first person and my experience was really well, uh, that kind of kept me like, you know, always wanted to do yoga and going back. So um, tonight I have Jamie Fleming of Black Moms Got to Calm. So I'm super excited. And so tonight we are going to have a conversation about how can we create a safe space at home. Um, so Jamie, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, just who you are and kind of what Black uh, Moms, excuse me, Black Moms Got to Calm is all about. <laughs> And yeah, go ahead. Okay, so hi y'all. I'm Jamie, like Lindsay said, and we met oof three years ago, I think, mm -hmm. doing yoga. Well, I used to do yoga in the park, but that kinda has been put on hold with the whole <laughs> COVID <laughs> thing. But um so I'm the founder of Black Moms Got to Calm, which is a safe space where stressed out mommies and women, so mother figures included, um, come to find their calm, peace. Um, harmony and joy and to overcome overwhelm and I do that through yoga meditation teaching uh, tips on self-care mindfulness affirmations so just pretty much anything that can help you find your calm that's what I help women do black women in particular yes absolutely <laughs> yeah, um, I remember I found out about um, back then it was just black guy uh, what was it just black girls um, got to come black girl yeah it was black yeah. girl um, and I found out through Nadia Dr. Nadia Richardson oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. No More Martyrs she shared your, your business and I was like 
I went. I said, I bet she's nowhere near Greenville. Like she's probably like in DC or something. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's in Greenville. So I was like, yes, we can do this. Um, so yeah. and they swim is really great. Um, and I think it's important because I know in the yoga space, a lot of times we see it's whitewashed, mm-hmm. um, slim white blonde women. Um, and you know, you go to these spaces and you don't feel comfortable and you feel like, am I supposed to be here? Like, is this something I can do? Which is interesting because, um, if you know anything about the more I've learned, I guess what I say about like meditation and yoga and just some of the practices, they come from people of color. So it's interesting to see, (laughs) you don't see our face, but like, that's kind of where it started. So that's, that's interesting. Um, so I wanted to begin by t- um, talking a little bit around what does safe space mean? Because we hear this a lot. Like everybody's like, that's like the new catchphrase. Like, I want to create a safe space. I want to create a safe space at work, at home, here, there, and everywhere. So I want to know from you, what does that mean to create like a safe space? Like, what are we actually saying? Um, I think it is more of a... Um... For me, I was that feeling in yourself or of yourself feeling safe because you might be in a, um, say, for instance, you're out, you're at work when we could go to work (laughs) and you might not be feeling, (laughs) you might not be feeling calm or, you know, centered or something might happen to make you not feel that way. um, And you're not home in a space that you've created for yourself. So I think a big part of it is having that space and practices you can do within yourself to create a space. And then also, of course, having maybe a set space in your home or wherever for you to um, get that grounded, centered, and at peace. So that's what I would say it is. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Um, For me, safe space is inside of me. Right. Um, and so as someone who has anxiety, I, it's, mm-hmm. I'm triggered a lot. I'm overwhelmed a lot. I'm very stimulated a lot. And I know now that I cannot control the surround, like my external environment. So yes. it's really important for me to like create that safe space within myself, somewhere that I can go to within myself mm-hmm. when I feel this like overwhelming, this overstimulated like experience. And that, like you said, goes back to grounding. So can you talk a little bit about grounding and centering yourself? Um, And so maybe why those techniques are important, just for people who may not know what that means. Right. So really, it's about, I would say, because I don't know, like, the textbook definition, but just feeling, you know, that feeling of just, you feel safe, you feel uh, centered, you feel at peace and relaxed. So it's important because there's so much going on around us. And even if you don't have anxiety, I do have anxiety. I've learned how to, like you said, you know, uh, find ways to deal with it. But there are, like, for example, the times we're living in now can make you feel anxious just because you don't, we don't know, like, if this is going away, are we going to have a new way of being? And then I talked about this week, like, with for those of us with kids, what are we going to do with our kids this school year? You know, so all these different things. Right. <laughs> All of these different things can make us feel ungrounded and just chaotic and overwhelmed. So having practices to make you feel centered and at peace, even when we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know, you know, we can't control what's going on. But we can feel that peace within ourselves, even in the midst of not knowing what's going on and not having a clear path to what's next necessarily. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like you said, you touched on... um, even if you don't have anxiety, you know, it's still important to stay grounded and have something that you can kind of go back to in the yes. event because we all get overstimulated at some yeah. time. You know, we all experience that. Um, and so I know now, especially for Black Americans, Black women, like trans women, black, like you said, mom figures, uh-huh. people who, you know, who are in the mothering role, we are experiencing so much going on right now. Absolutely. So like as a mom, like what are some things I guess that have been working well for you that have kind of mm-hmm. helped you navigate kind of this situation? Yeah. So I would say, uh, so it, of course this is what I already do, but I have been more um, intentional about doing it because this is an added layer <laughs> of mm-hmm. overwhelm for me too. So, like, making sure in the morning that I meditate 
and um, do my affirmation, do my morning routine, basically making more time for my yoga practice. Um, when things are overwhelming in the moment, like if I have to step away <laughs> for a moment and take some deep breaths, I would do that. If I need to get a crystal, you know, just to hold and center myself for a moment, I will do that. And also something that's been really helpful, uh, because, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was talking about um, being productive and like, you know, if you didn't start your business, if you didn't work on this project, <laughs> then you, what are you doing? And so I was like, you know what? In the beginning, I was like, I need to, I need a break. So let me just chill for a little bit. So I've been more intentional about like, chilling, relaxing, making more time for self-care. So that has been really helpful helpful for me during this time. Good. Yeah. yeah that, you, you hit a lot of points. <laughs> you, hit, you, hit, you hit a lot of good stuff. No, absolutely. I think, like, so yesterday I decided I was going to rest. I was like, I've been running, running, running. I just need a break. Mm-hmm. So yesterday I was like, no social media. And yeah. it was so hard because I was so used to just picking up my phone, tapping on that app, and flying yes. to it, right? Uh, and I know for me, social media does trigger some anxiety. Um, and so it's important for me to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, not today. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. not, yeah, yeah, not yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's like something we run to. So that was definitely good that you said that. Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, three things you said. I'm going to just like do different steps. So meditation. Yeah. Everybody's heard about meditation. We hear it, like I said, it's been commercialized. Right. Yeah. I mean, everybody <laughs> from like eight, eight sauce to Forever 21 has like a meditation kit. And <laughs> right. all this, you know, like all of this stuff. And so I think about this like for the black community and how different our lives and our experiences look for us um, and what meditation really means for us and how does that look for us. Even though, you know, I know everybody kind of meditates, but mm-hmm. we have different cultural experiences. So I wanted to talk about just a little bit in depth of meditation and like, <clears throat> to me, meditation is not all about sitting down with your hands crossed, with your palms up and, you know, chanting. Like, to me, that's yeah. what we see on TV. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like there's so many different aspects of meditation. So can right. you kind of talk about like meditation and like, what do we mean when we say meditate? Like, what, what is even the point? Why do we even meditate? Yeah, well, so there are lots of points. It benefits the meditation. So for me, I got started with it. Well, I got started because I started doing yoga. But for me, it's calming and relaxing. And it's a way to um, bring myself back to the present moment. And, in, you know, like when I do it in the day, I mean, in the morning, it helps me to stay in the moment during the day. But like you said, it's not just sitting. That is a way that we see often. But practicing mindfulness being in the moment is another way to practice meditation so and that just means whatever you're doing you are allowing yourself to do it so you're not like um you're not not having thoughts but you're not letting yourself like get caught up in whatever you're thinking so for example if you are doing chores if you're sweeping or washing dishes like you can just focus on that particular task and that can be a form of meditation going for a walk can be a meditation, uh, exercising. So it's really just kind of focusing your mind on one thing. Or, let me not say, because some of you have thoughts, obviously. You know, even when you're doing acidic meditation, your thoughts are going to come and go. But it's like not getting entangled with the thoughts and um, kind of just letting them come and go, letting the moment be what it is without judging it (laughs) as good or bad or your thoughts as good or bad and just letting things be what they are. So that is a meditation too. So kind of like acknowledging the thought. So not trying to not like Change not it. have the thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so say like, oh my God, why am I thinking this? Um, like uh, uniquely Amby Sam, she said meditate in the shower. That's another thing that you can do. Meditate while you're taking the shower and say intentions. I like to use affirmations with meditations or mantras. But yeah, because um, your thoughts, it's hard to turn off. <laughs> Even for me, I've been meditating consistently for like five, six years now. And sometimes, especially when times are overwhelming, I still have those thoughts. But I just, when I realize it, I'm like, okay, it's okay. Just bring yourself back and just keep doing that. Yeah. Like, I think meditation, I'm kind of the same way. Meditation works for me. I'll do it anytime, anywhere. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, I just got, I said, no, everything has to stop. Like, I right. just, like, 
<laughs> but it's important. And so, like, I know people that's well, now more people are home, but like in this, I guess we could discuss that kind of like in this environment now. And like, let's say you live in a house with a ton of people, your mm-hmm. kids are always home, and your spouse is there, or whatever. Um, it's still important to meditate. Like, we mm-hmm. still have to have time for ourselves. Um, and exactly. it may be difficult. Like, it may be difficult now because you know things are a little different. But yeah. I think it's really important. And I actually um, saw this post. Someone shared that she was like, uh, it was a girl, and she brought up, she said, what did she say? Oh, my gosh. It was from Twitter, and she, mm-hmm. like, the tweet was like, I really don't like how everybody is now saying I set intentions or I'm putting it into the universe and how everybody's, like, replacing um, prayer with meditation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how do you feel about that? Like, I don't know. Because we see that in, 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 especially in our community, when we know the history of, like, church in our community. So, like, I don't know. What do you think about it? Well, see, okay, so I grew up in church uh, yeah. my whole life. Since I was six weeks old, uh, I was in church, in the Pentecost Holy Church. But now I am not in the church. <laughs> um, so I'm like, but see, I don't have, okay, so I had the whole thing with, you know, I don't want to talk about Jesus or acknowledge him and or acknowledge the Bible and blah, 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 all that. But I've, at this point now, I mean, I'm like, there are things you could take away from all practices religion and things like that so that's how i feel and i feel like you call your higher power whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call it and i feel like i mean because i pray to you know spirit and the ancestors whatever Mm -hmm. and i say intentions use affirmations and i think it's okay for people to use whatever they need and want to use so whatever works for you i don't think we should be uh and i saw another post that said you know how can you you can't talk about Black Lives Matter with when you dissing uh, traditional African religions or something like that. So basically, yeah. Yeah. I think we should all be <laughs> inclusive of whatever yeah. anyone's path is and not judging each other on what works best for us, especially now. I mean, yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. <laughs> and I, like I, now, I am currently going to therapy and she has been like meditation works and she's like keep mm-hmm. doing it she's like you gotta center yourself in the morning she's like you that's something that's going to work for you and mm-hmm. so i have found like just a personal just to kind of elaborate what you said um just my personal experience with meditation when i wake mm-hmm. up in the morning my anxiety is through like i'm like on 100 i'm like i gotta do this i gotta go here i gotta All right and i'm like and so when I meditate in the morning, and like for me, my meditation in the morning is literally like get up, go to the bathroom, <laughs> like come back, like sit on the yeah. sofa, and just sit there and just kind of like no TV, no phone, mm-hmm. and just have a moment with myself. But that's my meditation. And that works for me. Like I'm like, okay, yeah. process these thoughts, acknowledge these thoughts, and then work through them. Don't try to forget them or act like they aren't there. Right, um, and so it really does, but it really does work. Um, and even like you said, you know, when you find yourself feeling not grounded, um, or you feel like you can't, like when you feel, uh, to me, it's like a sense of like chaos. Like I can't control mm-hmm. anything. That's when I know I need to meditate. Because I'm like, wait a minute, I'm trying mm-hmm. to control like every situation. Right. <laughs> like I need to center myself. Hold on. So yeah, no, no, no. Like meditation. I mean, it has helped me tremendously. Like yeah. I mean, I have seen like the difference in like how I think about things, like how Mm -hmm. I interact with people, how I'm able to like not be so defensive. Like it's been helping me like not be so like, what do you mean? You know, why would you say that? It's more like, no, (laughs) what are you (laughs) feeling? Um, And so a part of meditation, that kind of leads into this, this next is a part of meditation. And like we said, acknowledging it, I think what goes with that too is saying what you feel, like not just saying, I feel weird, you know, like Mm -hmm. calling it, in the words of a young uh, call a thing a thing. All right. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what meditation does. It helps you call a thing a thing. Exactly. Like you're able to go in touch and say, I am feeling frustration and I yes. am feeling this way because, you know, it's, it's like right. you're able to acknowledge how you feel and that really helps you and it helps you work through just from different range of emotions. So I definitely yes. love that you think on that. So then, of course, yoga. You talked about yoga. I love yoga. Now, I'm not like, I'm physically I'm not in the best shape, but I have been learning that that's okay. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted, I definitely wanted you to talk about yoga, um, because you do an amazing job, like making everybody feel included. Like you're not like move your leg, do this, oh, stretch. You know, you know, this is like yeah. you know, we all on a different. Yeah, you know, like we all different. It's okay. <laughs> Um, so I wanted you to talk a little bit about yoga and um, just the benefits of yoga as well. Um, so I'm going to let you go ahead. Okay. Well, yeah. So yoga for me, well, actually it started because I just had my daughter and I was trying to like snap back or whatever or get my body right or whatever. <laughs> That's why I really started. But <laughs> the more I started doing it, because like I said earlier, I, I have anxiety and I've always been like a control freak and a worrier. Mm -hmm. And so yoga really helped me to because it helps you to be in the moment because a lot of the um poses that you do in yoga you have to be focused like for example tree pose you're balancing on one leg you have to be focused or you're going to fall right mm -hmm. so it helps me to be in the moment and it's also grounding calming um and just like meditation like you mentioned about you know feeling your feelings or you know acknowledging your feelings yoga helps with that as well so, and I always tell people, like you mentioned also about, you know, people are different shapes, sizes, people have different levels of ability. So I always encourage people because something I always hear or I've heard, you know, is I can't do yoga because I'm too big or I'm not flexible or whatever the case may be. It's okay. <laughs> yoga is for people of all sizes, first of all. And um, the flexibility will come the more you practice as well. So, it's not a matter of you being flexible when you get on the mat. And then some days you might not be flexible, might, laugh, might not be as flexible as other days. Even for myself, like some days I find it difficult to do certain poses just because I might be tight or whatever, for whatever reason. So it's just a practice. And the more you do it, the, um, the more flexible you will become. But then also sometimes your body might not be able to do certain things and that's fine. And that's not a size thing. That just might be how your body is. You know what I mean? So again, I think you should just at least give it a try. Um, mm -hmm. And there are different types of yoga you can try too. So there's, oh. yeah, you have, and I can't, well, I don't want to get into different names, like the official name, but like they have the hot yoga, you know, cause. Oh yeah, 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 yeah a power yoga that's more like uh, more quick movements and you have the restorative yoga which is more slow slow movements you know you move into the poses more slowly so there are different types of yoga too that you can try to see what works for you as well so you don't have to be you know stuck with one type <laughs> you can yeah no works. yeah <laughs> I didn't. I, I've heard of hot yoga like I've heard of that and I was like that sounds like something I don't want to do so are there like different <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't want to be a hot. No, I've, I've done it. I've done it twice. Uh, my friend Toya, um, mm -hmm. she was teaching hot yoga in Simpsonville, and I went to her. I went to another one in Anderson with my friend Toya. She, she's, um, I always tease her because she used to be a fitness instructor, and now she oh. teaches yoga and she does uh, wellness things. Um, but yeah, I was like, girl, in that class, like, because she was having us do it kind of mm -hmm. more fitness style yoga, and I was mm -hmm. like, I do yoga, and I wasn't ready. <laughs> I would so, <laughs> are different types of yoga like do they offer different benefits or is it like the same thing I, w I mean if you do like a hot yoga for example or like mm -hmm. a power yoga I think that's more like um, I would say more of like an exercise type class I mean all yoga is you know good for your body but you know that's more intense I would say mm -hmm. but I think overall they all have the same benefit of you know, um, allowing yourself to be grounded, finding calm, uh, learning to be more mindful, learning mm -hmm. to be in your body and stuff like that. Okay. I know yeah. um, I was, I started doing yoga like in the mornings at home, um, just simple poses. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, just, I want something easy. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, I need something easy to help with a little flexibility. And I know one day I told my therapist, I was like, I did yoga the other morning and I started crying. I was like, and I don't know why, like I wasn't sad. Like, yeah. I, and she was like, she was like saying how like our muscles have memory. And when mm -hmm. we do yoga, like we release, like we're like getting those muscles moving and kind of getting yeah. some of that tension out of our body. It's just like, so your body's kind of releasing kind of yeah. that, you know, the tension that you have. So I was like, 
yoga is amazing. I was like, right. why don't I talk about this? <laughs> Yeah, and then just with like meditation and yoga, you just for me is like some an insight about anything I've been questioning or like situations I've been dealing with. It just makes it more clear. Answers come to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. By just taking the time to go within to sound really <laughs> spiritual, but but really like to go mm-hmm. inside yourself and get the answers you need. Yeah, I think that's a huge yeah. benefit yoga like it's been I'm like I love this and so like I don't do it every day but I do like mm-hmm. when I feel myself I'm like okay I need I need to get back center and I know it yeah. works for me I had a lot going on this summer um so we just moved so I'm like once I get settled yeah. and I can get like my space together then it's okay right. um, yeah. so I'm, I have a question for you so I know you do yoga more you know more consistently on a consistent basis so as far as like doing yoga at home like should like somebody maybe set up like maybe a station you know how like in pre-k there's like little mm. stations in the thing right so, like, <laughs> like how would someone even like what do we need to do like what are some of maybe some beginning things like do we have to have a mat do you have like can you tell us like the myths to kind of break some of that down and like whatever yeah yeah well i mean you don't have to have a mat you don't really need anything but <laughs> a floor if you don't mind getting on the floor <laughs> I mean, I remember um, my sister had a wreck uh, a few years ago. Oh, Oh, I think I lost you a little bit. There we go. I hope it's going to go off. Okay. So my sister had a wreck a couple years ago, right? And so she was in the hospital, and I stayed with her overnight. And I was like, I need to do some yoga, but I didn't have a mat because it was in the hospital room. So I just got a towel, and I used that to do yoga. So if you don't have a mat, it's okay. You can go get one from, like, Walmart, uh, TJ Maxx, any place like that. But if you don't, you can use a towel, or you can use the floor. You can even do yoga in your bed, because I do that sometimes. Before I go to sleep, yep, I do some... I like to do yoga before bed because I find it helps me sleep better. But yeah, you can do some in the bed. Um, Yeah. (laughs) You can do it anywhere. And you can have you had a chair yoga too. So if you have like limited mobility or, you know, you're not able to get on the floor that easily, you can do chair yoga too. So Mm -hmm. you really don't need anything, but you can use stuff to enhance your practice. So like incense, for example, candles, I like crystals. Sometimes I just have them near me when I'm doing mm-hmm. yoga. You might want to put some music on and depending on what kind of mood you want to uh, bring. So like if you want a calming mood, you can, you know, have that kind of music or mm-hmm. you want to get like hype. <laughs> Cause I mean, sometimes I listen to Megan the Stallion while I'm doing yoga or. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different energy. Yeah. Right. Like this morning I needed to like, I needed a boost. So that's what I listened to. If I need some calm, I might put on some India RE or some lines or something like that. So whatever kind of energy you need, you know. Also, YouTube is great for um, videos, yoga videos. If you don't know kind of where to start, you can find some videos there. You can look on Pinterest as well. They have, like, different sequences that you can do as well. Yeah, so, like, if, for example, like, if you have back pain, you can do find yoga for back pain. Or even on YouTube, you can find that. If you have, you know, muscle tension, uh, you need some energy, right. whatever it is. So you can search all that, YouTube, Pinterest. Um, and I would just say set aside some time for it. You know, it doesn't have to be an hour, two hours. You can do five or ten minutes, and that will still help you find calm, get grounded and center. And you don't have to do it daily, if you, know, you know, whatever works best for you, especially in the beginning if you're just getting started. Uh, take your time because you want to make, build it into a practice however you want that to look so just take your time with it right as you go forward and i think sometimes we go into it and we get discouraged like you said people go yeah. into like i don't have the body for it i'm not yeah. flexible you know i'm gonna look weird so i think it's good that you said it like it you don't need all the fluff it's just that's not what it's about like it's it's about yes. you so right. that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. And I think people think, well, I have to have the mat. I got to have a towel. Yeah. I got to put a yeah. water bottle. I got I to, gotta, no. <laughs> like, Use what you have. Use what you got. 
and it'll work. It'll work out for you. You know, you don't have to do what you see people do. And not, not knocking anybody posting on Instagram because I think it's inspirational. But I'm just saying you don't really need that necessarily to get started. And don't let that stop you, you know, from getting started. You're healing there. Absolutely. So I know you mentioned Crystal. So and if I, on my, on Consciously COVID, I don't talk a lot about, like, my personal. <laughs> right. That's why I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> on my personal yeah. Instagram, though, I talk a lot about, you know, I practice tarot. You know, I, got, I have crystals and, you know, chakra and energy healing, Reiki healing, like, all of that I talk about on my personal page. But you mentioned crystals, and that is something mm. that I want to talk about and introduce because I feel like things like crystals and what we're talking about gets a bad rap. Like, it, it's like, oh, no, you're doing a seance. Like, you were All right. <laughs> you were finished, like, what are you? And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm doing. Um, and so you mentioned crystals. And so I know, like, I know from this, learn, you know, I'm doing a little bit more learning um, that, of course, these different crystals have different properties and you can use them for different things. Um, mm -hmm. So... If someone, like, I guess maybe, if, could you talk, a I know you wear, like, you have a lot of bracelets, and so can you talk a little bit about, like, crystals and, like, their benefits as well, um, and, like, why you have them, and, you know, different things like that? Yeah, so, really, like you said, they just have, different crystals have different energies, so you can use them for, I mean, pretty much any kind of, I use them, people say you can use them for physical healing, I don't know, I haven't really tried <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it helps with energy and like um, energetically and emotional. Yeah. Uh oh, I lost you again. This is what happened, y'all. Let me let me let me do a disclaimer right quick. So, like you were saying about social media, I put this on my phone at uh, a limit, a time limit on my social media. Oh, good. So. So what happened was uh, my my limit was up for today, so I had to like ignore it for today. That's what happened. <laughs> Good. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I use them for uh, emotional and mental healing. So for like calm, I use smoky quartz, amethyst. Uh, so like, if I feel like I need energetic protection so like protection from the outside world or like negativity or like what's going on around me black tourmaline uh again smoky quartz so they just have different properties you can use them for abundance success self-love uh romantic love um just any kind of emotional or mental issue that you might be dealing with i find that you know in research says you know crystals different crystals help and then with the chakras you know the chakras have different colors associated with them so you could use crystals that um are associated with those chakras for those healing healing those centers yeah. so that's what i use them for too yeah i um definitely use i use them even with um doing yoga uh, mm -hmm. I was experiencing like a lot of like self esteem issues, and I was like, "What is going on? Like, I feel so damn so hard on myself." I was just like, "Oh, you're getting so bad. Oh, you're getting so you know, like you know, yeah. you just, like, what is going on?" And so I just I started researching, and it was like, "Oh, you you know, that's your sacral chakra, and this is what you need to do, and you need to start getting yellow things, wear yellow clothes, like yellow candles, like get citrine, and like do it." And I was like, "I'm gonna do it." And so when I started yeah. doing my yoga. Every day, I would just burn a yellow candle and just have the citrine and try to really, like, feel that energy. And it, right. I mean, people say, like, it doesn't work, but it helps me. And I think that's important for us to realize. Like, exactly. All of, these, all of these tools are, you know, yoga may not work. Some people just say, I just don't like yoga. I don't like doing right. it. I do yeah. feel different. And so it's it's okay. Like, it's right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like when and people so say, um... I, I, Okay, I was no, going to say, and when people say, like, I've had people say they can't really do a, sit a seated meditation, and I'm like, well, that's fine, you know, just figure out a way <laughs> to do it, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be seated. Because so, somebody told me before, like, they fall asleep uh, trying to meditate, and so yeah. maybe, I know, so maybe, like, <laughs> you know, just try a different way to practice that, you know, yeah. maybe not traditionally, but... 
Yeah, I know some people too say that it's difficult for them to meditate when they think of it in the sense of being silent. Um, right. People who have experienced, like people who experience trauma or have mm-hmm. anxiety or PTSD, they said like it's really difficult to kind of get quiet right. because of the trauma. And I'm like, but right. you don't have to. Like you can have some music. Like you don't necessarily exactly. yeah. meditate in pure silence. Yeah. You know, meditation could be walking through the park. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have, you know, it's not so conceptualized. Is it has to be this way or it's not meditation at all. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So, so yeah, no, no, no. So, I like, like I say, I like that you brought up the crystals. And I think all of these things are tools. Um, mm-hmm. And they definitely, like, you, everything that you have said tonight has been like, but you can do all of this stuff no matter where you are. Like, exactly. no that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Yeah. You can literally be at work with a crystal, like in your purse, like just in, keep in your bra. Cause I always keep them. Uh, my fiance always talks about me having a, in my bra, but I do. Like I care. I have a blood terminally right now. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, you can do it anywhere. You can literally do it anywhere. So it's. It, I think people, you know, it's different things work for different people, mm-hmm. and to put this, I guess, in, in perspective, as far as like consciously coping, as far as like mental health. You know, mm-hmm. there are different tools that we use for different, you know, mental health issues. And so right. some people don't like therapy. Some people yeah. genuinely like don't like therapy. I don't like going. I don't like talking. It doesn't work for me. And that's okay. Right. And so I think that's like the big thing. Like when we when we talk about creating our own safe space at home or physically in our body, we kind of have to look at it as a way. It's like what works for you? Like what is what works for you? Right. If you try meditation and you don't like it, try something else. If you don't exactly. like your try something else. Um, to me, reading books are a part of meditation. Like yeah. you lose yourself in books. Like I can right. read a book and really forget about everything. Yeah. Right. Like you can meditate when you journal. Just you yeah, know, journal exactly. And you sit in yourself, and so like, I think those things are important. So like, and that's why I was like, it has. We got to talk about this type of healing. We have we people have to know there's other options out there, and I think that's yes. why you know, it's so important. And I like what you do, and I like like I said, I love your your page. I love everything. Like your ther- your um your sessions are so good and just so common. And so I think people need to know like you know it's other options. You you don't yeah. have to do the traditional Western form right. of healing. Like, there's so many other aspects of healing. And just give it a try. You know, it's like, yeah. you don't have to do it, but just just try it. <laughs> yes, just try it. Um, and so just kind of to wrap up on the last day. Now, you talked about affirmation cards, and I know for sure you have your own. Um, and so I love affirmation cards. Like, I do, like, sticky notes. Like, I like, yes. I mean, like stick them in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But talk about, like, affirm- like, affirmations and how, imp- when I tell you, like, Affirmations oh, yeah. will change your life. Like, so just talk about affirmation cards, yours, and talk about like why you do and why you got started, how important it is, just so people can understand. Yeah. So my cards are for calm. Um, mm-hmm. They are currently not in stock right now, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have the for calm. So basically, if you need some calm, I do have digital cards too. You can print them out, but that's what I have. But I really, well, I don't, I can't even remember. I think it was 2007 when I first learned about affirmations. Mm-hmm. And I think it was from Iyanla, a book. Yeah. And I can't remember. I can't remember the book because that was a long time ago. But I just remember. Uh, but I've always loved quotes, like, since I was, yeah. like, in middle school, high school, because I love to read. But I learned about affirmations. And I remember I used to write them down in notebooks, like, all the time and quotes down. Um, and so I'm trying to think. I probably said them like on and off between like 2007 and till I had my daughter in 2013. So I probably on and off I you know would say them sometimes, write them down. But after I had her and I was dealing with postpartum depression and like then trying to get myself back to a better place, like mentally and emotionally, I started journaling more and then using affirmations to like to get myself out of that space and like you know affirming what I wanted to become, how I wanted to feel, and stuff like that. And so just in case anybody doesn't know what affirmations are, it's basically saying how you want to be or who you want to be, how you want to feel, and saying it in the present tense as if it's already happening now. So I did that. uh, And I continued to just maybe either say affirmations, you know, in the morning, throughout the day, like you said, post them, 
I used to write them on note cards. Uh, now I put them in my phone. <laughs> so I look at them. Uh, so they really have, I mean, it really helped me to change my life. Like, mm-hmm. and um, not externally, but like internally too, like with my, how I felt about myself um, and my life and just helping me make the changes I want to make. Um and now, so like something I do now is I kind of, it's kind of like affirmations is write down how I want my day to go. So like mm. kind of said, that's how I set my attention for the day. So like how I want to feel during the day, what I want to happen. And it doesn't always happen that way, but <laughs> I just think the practice is good. And you know, even with <laughs> affirmations, you know, it's not gonna probably happen overnight, especially if you have like some blocks around what you're saying. But the more you practice them, and especially doing mirror work, which is something I've been doing more of often. So saying my affirmations in the mirror. So I'm looking mm-hmm. at myself in the eyes. That helps as well. But they've been super, super helpful for me. And I know a lot of people. So, yeah. So using cards or finding them online and writing them down helps. Putting notes around you. So I have a vision board where I have affirmations on them. I try to get my daughter to say them. Sometimes she does. Sometimes she doesn't. But, you know, I try to instill that in her, too, you know, because it really helps you with, you know, how you feel about yourself, which is yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. And then that reflects on everything else in your life. So I find it and super that helpful. And that safe space, yeah. That, I mean, that goes right back to now you're creating a safe space for yourself. So now you right. can go back to, to yourself. Um, yeah. And so you're, you're kind of, to me, it's like reclaiming your power. Like you're saying, yes. like, you know, I am, you know, great. Exactly. I am. And, and so the more, and you start to believe it. And it really, yeah. because it's, it's funny, not funny, but we know that negative talk does so much damage. Like we know when we say, I'm so bad, I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, yeah. I'm so stupid. We constantly say those things. We start and we feel, to believe it. And yeah, we feel and we so feel down it. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so yeah. just imagine that we did the opposite and said, I'm so intelligent, you know, I'm a great mom, you know, and you start saying those things, you believe those things. And then I know for me, like when I do affirmations, it was funny. So funny story, <laughs> my therapist <laughs> that I have now was like, do you do affirmations? And I was like, I wouldn't call them affirmations, but I do write stuff on sticky notes. So she was like, what? And I was like, I write some mean stuff like you should have known better. Like, <laughs> no. She's like, yeah, no, that's not. No, 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 that's, that's not right. <laughs> so, like, now that I've changed that and, like, okay, let me do positive stuff. Let me say, and, and you know, we, I'm the type of person I'm ha- I've been working on, like, it's okay to have emotions and feel them. Yeah. And yeah. So that's what we've been working on. It's like, it's okay to feel this way. And so now that I know, like, it's okay to feel happy or it's okay to 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 say that I'm smart. Like, nobody thinks yeah. like, I'm a big butthole. Like, you're just saying yeah. you think you're smart. Um, like, I, I've gotten better. And it mm-hmm. has helped me not just with me believing in myself, but it's helped, like, my relationships with other people, too. Yeah. So, like, even with my son, I notice I parent different now because I'm mm-hmm. not saying every day I'm such a horrible mom. I can't believe I did that. Why didn't I iron last night? You know, like, now I'm more, like, employing myself. I'm like, I'm a great mom. Like, I made the best decision. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm making the right decisions right now in the moment. You know, and I'm right, saying those right. things. And so now I be- I'm starting to believe it. And I'm like, huh, so our relationship, even with my son, is changing. Because yeah. he's like, oh, you have some confidence now. Mom is like, oh, okay. Yeah. So and it's not just it, it. We we think that oh, you just do the work to yourself, and it, nobody yeah. else realizes it. But we don't even realize that it affects like our relationships yeah. with loved ones, friends, coworkers. Um, so it's definitely like from uh, affirmation cards, it's just like. Uh, amazing yeah and you act differently when you when you believe stuff about yourself you act in different ways you know what I mean like so um before so I've I've got divorced like well I've been separated since 2017 got divorced recently but um like last year but um there's a big difference in how I was talking to myself during that period of time and like Mm -hmm. now and my sister would say like I could tell (laughs) And I can see it myself, or how I even interact with people, you know what I mean? Like, it's a big difference in 
how I was feeling and what I was saying to myself at that time. And then as I continued to, you know, go through it, yeah, the things I said to myself and how I acted because of that, you know. So, yeah, it definitely affects, you know, the people yeah. around you. Yeah, it definitely does. I'm divorced too, so I understand. Like, yeah, I, I talked really negative to myself for a long time. Like, yeah. now I'm like, you, like, you are not a bad person. Like, right. if, you know, if, if you know anything about Brene Brown, she talks a lot about like shame and, and, and yeah. guilt. And like, girl, she blew my mind. I was like, girl, I love Brene. So, Me yeah, and, those, and, and these tools, but these tools help. And so, I think people, we, I think we live in a society now, we want things to be quick and fast. Like we're like, yeah. I want to do yoga today, and I want to feel better today, and I want to meditate right now. And right. I and it's like, that's not. It's a it's practice. Not that's the I practice yoga. Yeah. I practice meditation because we're constantly learning and growing. And I mean, like you said, you hit it like on the head. You said, I mean, I've been doing yoga for these many years, and sometimes I do yoga and still have some issues, kind of moving yeah. around. In my like yeah, you think you about, know, you know. External, like, just think about the pandemic. Like, <laughs> this is something not a well, I guess some people saw coming, like, spiritually, but yeah. we didn't see this coming. So, like, mm -hmm. even myself, somebody who's I call the calm coach who you know <laughs> teaches calm, I did not see this coming. So, I'm like, what you mean I gotta homeschool my kid? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I have to be out of work for this time today because I work, um my job is a transcriptionist. Mm -hmm. I, I used to go to the office, but for like a month, they had to figure that whole thing out, you know, remote working. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, so how do I go from, I go to work every day to, and my kids at school every day to, uh, I'm not going to work because <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And I'm a teacher now, what? <laughs> you know, so there's different things. <laughs> There are different things like, that I'm like. You know, creatures of habit. Like, we so used yeah. to like, our daily routine, man. Exactly. So yeah, it's going to be easier gonna... to stay calm when you kind of know what's going to yeah. happen. But when yeah, something like this happens, you got to, it's a practice. I had to repractice <laughs> myself. Like, okay, don't freak out. <laughs> You know, you know like, and I think that's good too that you mentioned that. I think sometimes the disconnect too with people and utilizing like these tools of yoga and meditation, people think that if you're the yoga teacher, that you got it all to get like she yeah. got it, man, Ooh, she got it all. And that's right, she's still human. Like, right. I still <laughs> like, have a kid who is like very strong will and yeah. independent, you know what I'm saying? So I have to like calm myself i have to go away and breathe or whatever you know what i mean so yeah, yeah we're all affected by just for this example the pandemic and you know what's going on even like the racial stuff that's been going on as mm -hmm. black people you know we're all affected by that too so yeah. it's definitely a practice so it's not yeah. just a one-time thing <laughs> and then boom no and it's you know I, that's why you know and i, I wanted to have this conversation because i was like i want people to know there are tools out there like you said yeah. with everything going on um it not only is it a pandemic we're seeing a big shift um in society in the western yeah. society yeah and we're seeing a big change and how we are interacting and things that black people are saying like we're tired this is enough like uh -uh. right so we still have to rest like we i'm a mental health advocate i still have to rest like i cannot yes. help anybody if i'm not like exactly you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, we still have to employ these tools and there are different tools that we have, not just therapy, not just traditional therapy or psychology. There are other tools as well that may work, that may help. Um, right. And so you know, I, I wanted to definitely do this. So before we wrap up and y'all trying to keep up with the time, I'm like, Instagram, no play. They like sprint. They will cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess we wrap up. Um, just tell everyone like where they can find you, where they can purchase stuff, like what you got going on, your whole thing. <laughs> okay, so you can go to blackmomsguides.com. I have blog posts, tips about meditation, yoga, mindfulness, affirmations. Uh, Black Mom Calm Shop is where you can purchase things like, so I don't have cars now, <laughs> but I have a book. Um, <laughs> And some digital products too that will that can help you as well. And then I also have a workshop coming up next Sunday, twenty sixth, uh, creating calm in your daily life workshop. 
where I will talk more about some tools you can use to find your calm. Plus, we're going to do some meditation and yoga as well. And it's for all uh, levels. So even if you've never meditated or done yoga, you can join in. And I believe you will be able to follow along. But as I always say during yoga, if you have to take a break, that's why. Just rejoin us when you can. But yeah, that is all on blackmomsguidetocalm.com. And then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, blackmomcalm. So and I think that's it. <laughs> that's all my, that's my spiel. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much for the conversation. Um, so guys, like I said, if you are, you know, want, if you've ever wanted to try yoga, meditation, if you need some guidance, if maybe you need someone to talk to, Jamie is really good about it. She's really personal. She will let you know the ins and outs. Website is yes. very user friendly, very, you know, you can go to it. You can click the, it's not, Difficult to find, like everything is kind of <laughs> <laughs> everything is like right out there. Um, yeah. and just everything, um, really helpful. I know Jamie does a lot of things on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of Instagram live, and I think you know, like if you guys go in and kind of do those things every day, maybe you'll start seeing a difference and a change. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's once a week, you say, "Oh man, Jamie's gonna do a live break. I'm gonna hop on and just just kind of get some create some calm and yes. try to get to it." So thank yeah, you guys my, for my lives are short. My meditations are short on yeah. live. This FYI. So if you want to hop in right quick, it'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect for you. <laughs> Everybody go to the workshop. I, I saw it the other day and I was like, I need to sign up. And I kept saying that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back and do this. I'm definitely gonna be there. So if if you guys thinking about it, Lizzie from Conscious Global will be there because I have not been doing my stuff and yeah, I need to get them up here. But I, I've been doing, I had a lot going on, but yeah, oh, so gotcha. thank yeah. you so much, Jamie. Thank you. Um, you know, have a good weekend and everybody have a good night. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>